This week, I get to talk all about the weird writing advice that can help you write so much faster. So let's start with a quiz. Do you fall into a category where obstacles keep on coming up and it's really hard to find time to write? Something else always takes priority. And when you do sit down to write, the spark is kind of gone. You don't know what to do. Or do you fall on the opposite end of the spectrum where you are thinking about it all the time? You're worried about it all the time. Is it good enough? What are people going to say? Am I ever going to make my goals? All of those little things. So this is the episode where I get to talk about attachment theory. It's become so popular with so many people I know when it comes to love relationships. But just as we all have attachment needs, we all need people and relationships in our lives. We have creative needs too. Sometimes we repress our creativity. And so I personally think that this theory applies both to our relationships and the creative process. And I'm going to explain what it is and tell you why. Because let me get there right here. We are on the map to infinite creativity. So we're right smack in the middle. Love the creative process. And of course, I love to talk about how the energy centers, the chakras, contribute to our expression, contribute to the creative process. It's how we make stuff. And so now we're talking about the heart and how the energy of the heart plays into this process. This is how we commit, we love up, and we nurture our creative dreams into reality. And never has that applied more than with a book. And so I'm going to get into it. Let's talk about attachment theory. So attachment theory is about how children, partners, friends, spouses, it's how they relate to one another and attach to one another so they can form strong, loving relationships. And so it's broken down into three basic types, four actually, because there's also a mixed type. And so let me explain what the three types are. Avoidant attachment is exactly what it sounds like. Avoiding relationships, maybe there's a little fear of commitment lying underneath. There's a little deciding not to call all of those sides where we put other things above the relationship because there might be a fear of attaching and getting too close. Then on the other end of the spectrum, we have... Uh, anxious attachment, where we're overthinking the relationship. We're thinking about it all the time. It means too much. And the anxiety, the doubt, and the worry about the relationship starts to create insecurity. And the third attachment style is the secure attachment style. So this is the attachment style where it's kind of regular, steady, and understanding. So on the one hand, it doesn't really put up with avoidance. It really, it wants a relationship. It's there for the commitment. And yet it doesn't pray, uh, put too much pressure or weight on the relationship causing to it to implode. And that's exactly what we want to do with our books. The fourth type is the mixture of both the anxious and avoidant because we could, if we're if we're overly anxious, we can go into an avoidance. And then if needs come up, then avoidance can sometimes go into anxious. So the imbalance between anxious and avoidant can sometimes collapse into one. And that's why I think it's really interesting, especially in the context of creativity, because these are the complaints I get most often from people I work with. I can't find time to write. I'm worried about the writing. I'm struggling with a lot of self-doubt. And what happens with attachment theory is there is a wonderful solution which isn't like, well, do these five things and you're going to have a secure attachment. It's more like energy work where you're kind of moving into a secure style of attachment through characteristics and through being aware of these things that characterize 
a really healthy relationship between mother and child, it said, but also a healthy relationship with spouses, partners, friends. And so I'm going to get into the five characteristics. This isn't a to-do list. It's more of a consciousness list where when you're setting up your regular writing practice, bring this into it. So number one is proximity. So proximity in a healthy, stable relationship is where it's around more than once a week, and yet it's not a big deal to write or not to write. So it doesn't have to become too much of a battle. You want to be sitting down to write multiple times a week because it keeps your project top of mind. You don't need to be rigid about it. It doesn't need to be every single morning, but if it can be three or four mornings in a week or three or four afternoons in a week, three times a week and you're good. That keeps steady progress without having too many ups and downs. The next thing in secure attachments is emotional attunement. And so in a mother-child relationship, which is what the, the literature talks about, how a mother can sync up with a child and that forms a secure attachment. They can understand, of course, they react when the child cries, but sometimes they even know the things that are going to make the child cry. They almost sometimes anticipate the needs. And so it's great to just through that proximity and through that regular availability, you're getting really attuned. You kind of have the next thing top of mind. So that inspiration around you when you're doing other things kind of reminds you in an inspired positive way to that you can use this in your work. It's just a fun interaction that can play out in life and then play out on the page. When you know you're getting into a sad chapter, you anticipate that and you're really able to dive in with the love of the manuscript. The next thing on my little list is predictable routine. And so I talked about this a few days ago, a few weeks ago in um, the calendar pages. So I think it's so much easier to create a predictable routine when you're not every single day saying, I want to write today, and then creating a different priority or becoming anxious about it. Instead, plan out your week, put three dots on the calendar. I'm going to take 15 to minutes to an hour to write this day, this day, and this day. And then that comes into regularity because although days definitely can be unpredictable, especially when there are so many different priorities vying for our attention, if we say every single day that we're going to write and then every single day something else takes priority, then that's often a reason why we don't get into that regular routine. So predictable routine, a place, you know, making the canvas bigger and looking at a month or a week. When is my writing time? That can sometimes lead to more predictability because in a day, so many different things can happen. Safe exploration. The last two are connected. So it's said that when a toddler has a secure relationship with its parents, then it's able to explore its environment in new and challenging ways, and yet it still feels Safe. And so when you kind of set the groundwork with that predictable routine, the proximity of the project, so it's always top of mind, then we can start to explore. And it's not as if, is this working or is this not working? You have safe exploration because you know what? If it's a mistake, who cares? This is play. It may not work, but, uh, but you can trust in the secure routine Whereas if I write a paragraph that's just way too out there or I have too many metaphors or too many um, just cultural uh, references that might not make sense to anybody but me, then you know I'll set it down and then I'll come back to it and I'll be more objective after a day or two. And if it didn't work, no big loss. I write a couple times a week. So that's number four. And then the number five, Positive communication is so 
important for healthy attachment and healthy creativity. When you do sit down to write, when you do get into your regular routine, congratulate yourself. I feel as if I try to congratulate people all the time in this. So congratulate yourself. Really create positive communication in your mind about your progress. Don't beat yourself up. It doesn't work. It leads to a bad relationship with your creativity and you'll avoid it because every time we either reward ourselves or we are hard on ourselves, we're creating uh, neurological patterns that associate that with the deed we're doing. And so our brains will naturally push away into anxious or avoidant categories, things where we're overthinking or avoiding or having negative communication around that item. So if you want a really fun and positive way to move forward with your book or your creative process, I have the Map to Infinite Creativity right down below with fun writing prompts that can get you into every stage of the creative process. It's totally free. The free classes in each of these stages, ideation, fantasize and strategize, unlock your voice, love the process, burn through blocks is next week coming up. So be sure and sign up. Then celebrating wins. Um, and this also comes along with your publishing plans, the big win that so many of us are looking for. And then growing your mission and growing your audience and growing your writing practice. So every single Friday, I put out a new video. Subscribe to the channel and you'll get more. But the most important thing is that you take some time to write this weekend. So much love and I will see you soon.